so we'll continue uh, discussing friction or rather equilibrium with friction um, and uh, the first problem that we would address today So the first problem that we would address today is, uh, let's say, this one. Okay. So, so the question is, uh, how much should this bar weigh? Mm. Or in other words, determine W, or rather, Sir. yes. Sir, someone is waiting. Determine, determine the limits of W. Uh, for which the system would be in equilibrium. So we are doing this problem right here. So I hope you can see the image actually. Are you able to clearly visualize this one? Okay, so what you need to do, uh, you need to start with the free body diagrams. Uh, and uh, it is said that all these pulleys are frictionless. Okay, so if I let's say start with the free body diagram of uh, this slender bar right here. Okay, so that makes an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal. Okay. And uh, and receiving some reaction uh, from the pin joint O, which is which can be summed into O Y and O X. And then at another 30 degree angle, uh, and at a um, you know at one third of its length, it is also receiving this tension T okay and then the weight is uh, so it's a uniform rod actually so the weight is acting weight is acting in the middle Okay, so you can have the dimensions. So from O to let's call it this point as G, that is L by 2, and uh, Okay, the drawing is a little off actually. This, uh, you know, this four uh, uh, wire tension is not actually normal to the uh, component over here. Uh, however, uh, the distance up to this point measured along the length of the rod would be 
twice cell by three. Okay, so that is the free body diagram. There is a free body diagram of the uh, rod, and uh, you are you are not actually looking for uh, the uh, the values of O X and O Y. So the only quantity that you are looking for is W. You are interested in W. So what you can do, the only uh, you can you know represent T as a function of W. And how you can do it? You can do that by taking uh, you know taking moment about O, which would consist of both the weight and the tension, and uh, then have a relation between the two. And for equilibrium, obviously that has to be zero. So then you have an expression for T. Uh, uh with respect to w for example uh so w provides a clock counterclockwise moment which is uh w times l by 2 times root 3 by 2 as in cos 30 degree and then you have to So what you can do is you can represent this t over here as uh, t times root 3 by 2i plus 1 by 2j. Okay, And uh, let's call this, uh, so this point is a. So our a with respect to o can be written as how much? Uh, Twi twice l by 3 then uh, then minus root 3 by 2 i plus half j okay so the next term in the moment calculation with respect to o is this thing okay and that way you have one relation between that way you have uh, you know one equation uh, that allows you to represent T in terms of W. Okay, so some correlation should be there. What relation do you, are you getting between T and W? So I'm getting 3W by 4. 3W by 4. Okay, achha. So why do we need to represent T in terms of W? You see, when we go for the second body, uh, T is still there. The uh, cable tension is still there. Uh, but there is no way you can account for W. Unless, of course, you can you represent T in terms of W. So now uh, let us draw the free body diagram of the block. <coughs> that is on a plane which makes an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal okay and please note how i'm showing the uh, in the plane okay i'm not actually showing the actual flat surface okay i'm actually showing uh, the representative surface okay only to mm, you know uh, show the angle okay because in order for me to draw the free body diagram it should be free from all its supports and that you know that flat surface right there which is shown in gray color that itself uh, is a support and so is the cable that connects from the other side now i'll not be showing the cable but instead i'll show with an arrow uh, the tension coming from the cable okay so there is t then um, there is force due to gravity okay which is 100 lb okay. and and then you can expect a normal force okay so this one is normal and the corresponding so corresponding friction force you can imagine now we are talking about limits that means we are talking about limiting friction that means where uh, the situation is that the system is still in equilibrium but uh, you know on the verge of uh, you know uh, going uh, you know 
um, you know uh, not being in equilibrium that is uh, on the on the verge of having uh, a relative motion between the surfaces uh, the point is that the friction is limiting friction that means uh, friction force is uh, mu s times n and that serves as the fourth equation because you see in this problem uh, sorry not the fourth equation but the third equation okay you see uh, we are uh, you know treating this as a particle okay so all we have in its equation of equilibrium two equations of equilibrium summation of fx and fy equals zero or i can take it to be summation of forces in the normal direction and the tangential direction to be zero okay uh, what are normal and tangential directions i can show them to be like this so this is the normal direction and this is the tangential direction okay so i can equate the forces okay or, or rather balance the force and this should be equal to zero okay so i have only two equations but uh, once i incorporate the friction force there would be so the free body diagram is still incomplete so once i incorporate the friction force i'll be having three unknowns okay and that's why i need this third equation so let's say this is the third equation of all, all the equations of equilibrium are we supposed to solve okay hello hello ami ektu kaaje busy achi okay so um, so you can you can write the equations but uh, the problem is uh, in which direction should the friction force act so for two directions we will be getting the less than yeah. and greater than so the answer is that uh, depending on which limit are you looking for okay that means so uh, what condition are you considering whether the system moves in the left or in the right and accordingly the friction force would act in the opposite direction so uh, i'm just considering considering case a okay which is a uh, system moves to left okay that the entire system uh, would move to left which basically means that the friction force f would uh, act in the in the right okay which basically means i'm looking for the w max value over here and when i consider the case b i'll be having the uh, w mean value okay that means then this block is able to pull the rod to the other side okay when i'm considering the system moves to the right uh, but let's say if i consider this case okay so all you have to do is you can you know write this equations of equilibrium okay so uh, the only force that is not either in uh, normal or tangential direction is the w so you can obviously resolve that okay uh, now i know for a fact that a lot of you uh, even before drawing the free body diagram even before writing any of the equations of equilibrium I have already done this n equals w cos theta never do that okay because uh, in most problems that you did in your undergrads you are not familiar with uh, uh, you are only you know uh, seeing uh, the tensions cable tensions and uh, anything uh, um, uh, coming uh, from from a cable that is parallel to the plane okay now this only is going to be true when uh, all the other forces except for the weight all the other external forces i'm not talking about the reaction forces all the other forces are uh, you know uh, parallel to the plane okay so of course is uh, you know uh, this is generally not correct generally not correct number one the process itself is not correct okay i mean a uh, lot of you think uh, that you are uh, being street smart but uh, e that is just bad practice okay uh, as far as uh, uh, engineering mechanics goes that is just bad practice you know follow the steps 
okay and a is not trivially w cos theta for every example in this case possibly but not all the time okay so uh, so you know uh, right uh, First, draw the free body diagram, and from that, write the equations of equilibrium, and then try to solve. Sorry. Okay, so can you tell me what are the values of W are you getting? So W max equal to one, one on two point eight five, one hundred twelve point eight five. W max you are getting one hundred twelve. Yes, point nine. Point eight five. Much? Yes. This much? What is the unit? LBF sir. lb okay yes sir i am also getting this okay okay so if this is the weight okay what is the mass of the rod can you tell me how much is the mass w equals mg right so how much should be the mass so how much is g in uh, british system do any of you know i mean only thing that you have to do is convert between meter and feet so g is about 32.2 feet per second square so if you are getting w max can you tell me how much should be the mass If W max is hundred and thirteen pound force, then how much is the mass? sir i am getting w minimum as uh, 20.48 okay so that is the weight yes, right yes sir 20. something 20.5 right uh, yes, so that sir, is the weight. okay so that is the weight but what about the masses how much should be the mass sir some are waiting i guess it's all already half an hour through the class let them wait uh but my question is uh, can you tell me how much is the mass if uh, the weights are given sir for that 112.85 it's um, 3.5 lb okay and what would be the unit of mass I mean, just you know. Uh, uh, so most of you are silent. Okay. The pardon, sir. Sir, I couldn't hear, sir. Uh, sir, what did you ask last? So uh, my question is simple. Uh, if the weights can be weights are these, then what are the masses? That is the limit. Uh, you know, the weight obviously would come from the mass, right? But what would be the uh, mass uh, limits on the masses? So mass limits. Same magnitude. Sorry. Sir, the mass would be one hundred and twelve point nine L pound and twenty one twenty point five pound. Okay. 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 So yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. 
okay so when you are using not the standard unit which would be pound dull not pound okay for force okay uh, instead you are using the gravitational unit okay so uh, you don't need to do do that you know division with g okay that's why the this question was asked okay so you know you don't need to divide with 32.2 or any number okay so the idea is 1 pound mass weighs 1 pound force or 1 pound weight same thing applies to kg force or uh, kg weight that 1 kg of mass okay weighs uh, 1 kg force at so and so location and so and so temperature and so on i don't know so uh, uh, but uh, that's the idea okay so that you don't, you don't have to do that conversion with the uh, acceleration due to gravity so uh, so the thing is uh, yes the acceleration due to gravity is still there but you are simply using uh, uh, you know a different unit of force which is not a standard unit okay and this rule only applies to the standard unit okay so okay so, yes so the unit of w max and w is actually lbf right pound forces that will be the yes. unit here yes but uh, i don't know for some reason they uh, they are you know uh, they don't put this a for m so ideally it is lbm or lbf or I don't know if this sounds funny, LBW, but uh, uh, but apparently the people who use this unit, they simply drop the last letter and uh, somehow this doesn't confuse them uh, because of the fact that when it is force, they're actually talking about force and when it is the weight uh, or sorry, when it is the mass, they're actually talking about the mass. And uh, basically, also when you you know convert between weight and mass, it's the value remains the same. So so you can simply write them as LB. It doesn't matter. You don't have to write LBA for LBW or LBM. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay. So uh, so with that, we'll move on to the next problem. It is very similar to the uh, problem that we did, did the other day, uh, but you can consider this to be, you know, uh, doing another example of the same variant. Uh, now, Sir. Okay. Yes. Sir, in the previous problem, uh, mm -hmm. if I think about the APD of the block, then there mm -hmm. will be some uh, friction force, and uh, to balance the torque, the normal should be uh, shifted. And should I show it in the APD? Uh, so, so the thing is, uh, again, where would you shift the normal force? Because we are still modeling it as a particle. Okay. First of all, that shifting of normal force only matters. Uh, mm, I mean, that moment thing and other thing that only matters uh, for an object with, uh, you know, uh, substantial dimension. Um, mm, and yes, you're right that it is never actually acting through the midpoint. Okay, on the uh, way, I mean, uh, the, at the interface of the ground and the object, it never actually goes to the center. Uh, so, but we are actually modeling it as a particle. So there is no place where you can shift it. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, if we, if we are, uh, you know, pushing and uh, pushing a, pushing an, Almeida, okay, through this uh, slanted surface, okay, because it's too heavy, you cannot lift it over the stairs, okay, so you made a slope, okay, let's say at an angle of theta, and um, 
let's say uh, at a height of h are you applying this uh, horizontal force p okay and the coefficient of friction is uh, let's say mu s okay uh, and uh, and the w of course you know uh, goes past uh, this g which is the center uh, you can if it is uniform so it is the geometric center so that's why the w passes through okay uh, so you are applying a force which is parallel to the plane let's say for the sake of simplicity I assume you are applying a force which is parallel to the plane it doesn't have to be and also let us consider these are the dimensions so uh, let's say this is this height is x okay this height is uh, h and this height is b okay now uh, what uh, you pointed out that uh, when i draw the free body diagram uh, the normal force doesn't exactly pass through middle of uh, this phase. That means uh, it is not B by 2 and B by 2 on the two sides. Uh, so, so, mm, so let's say if this is the corner uh, about which I'm going to take all the coordinates, okay? So, uh, um, so this is so this is let's say uh, the distance. Um, what should I call it? This is where let's say the normal force acts. Okay, I'm just about to show that it doesn't exactly act through the middle. Okay, so I'm assuming it is acting through some arbitrary location. Okay, uh, on this plane. But the you know the at every stage it has to be in equilibrium. And so of course the friction right. force. One second. The friction force, uh, you know, still is shown in the same way. It's because that friction force uh, is acting on that interface. And in our two D diagram, there is only one line that we can show, which is the line of action of the friction force. So we can show the friction force anywhere on this line of action. The normal force, the the line of action of the normal force, uh, need not be passing through the middle of this surface sir the mg frictional force and the normal direction will form a three force member sorry sir uh, the normal reaction uh, mm -hmm. and the weight and the mm -hmm. frictional force will form a three force member and the point which the uh, weight weight vector is passing through mm -hmm. uh, that point also the, the normal reaction will also pass through that point because it's a three force member no i that don't understand uh, so you are saying the normal force, the friction force, and the weight, that makes it a three-force member? Yes, sir. To be at equilibrium, it has to pass through the same point. No, I think the argument is a little uh, off. I would uh, think in this way. Let's say this is the line of action of the horizontal force, or sorry, the force that is parallel to the plane. And sir, this if is P is zero. Then only it. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not assuming P is zero. I'm not assuming P is zero. Okay, then it will be like for that. Okay. Also. That will also. Uh, be so good. you can uh, you can extend the lines of action of W. Why am I extending the line of action of P and W and not that of N? Because because their lines of actions are kind of fixed. Okay. Depending on how much P I'm applying, depending on on whether or not the object is actually moving or about to move or it's still in equilibrium, okay, uh, or it is moving downwards. Whether you you know applying a uh, force parallel to the plane, but that is only to keep the um, you know uh, object from accelerating. You know it is still going downwards, but without an acceleration. Okay, you can imagine how uh, how p you know might come to use in that situation. So in either case, the lines of action can be uh, if I if I uh, you know uh, imagine that there is a fixed point at, uh, on which I'm applying the p. So their lines of actions are fixed. Okay. Now uh, the result, uh, the resultant of n and f, must pass through this point of intersection, if the object, whether going upwards or downwards, uh, you know, being in uh, is not accelerated, okay, or being uh, in equilibrium, okay, whether it is stationary, moving upwards or moving downwards, or about to move upwards, about to move downwards, okay. In any situation, if it is not accelerated, then. Uh, then the resultant of n and f must pass through this point over here. But of course, you know the uh, there are three situations. It is moving downwards. That is about to move downwards. 
about to move upwards there is a two limiting situations and anything in between okay uh, the direction of the friction force and also the magnitude of the friction force would be different okay and because of that uh, the the fact that so you know each point can you repeat once more yeah i'll i'll repeat uh, but let me finish this statement you see mm, the resultant mass pass through resultant of n and f okay the ground reaction must pass through this point right here okay the point of intersections of the lines of action of the weight and the externally applied force okay now there could be three situation you are you know bringing the almira down the slope without acceleration okay so it is let's say about on about to have a relative motion in the downward direction or you are you know pushing it up okay uh, which is uh, kind of the obvious situation and the third situation that it is anything in between it is just in equilibrium okay there is, obviously there would be a range of value of p uh, in which uh, this object would be in equilibrium okay and depending on what value p is okay so p mean is you can imagine when the object is going downwards you are taking gradually taking the armira down the slope uh, p max is when you are pushing it upwards without acceleration and uh, and anything in between would keep the uh, armira in uh, you know uh, static okay in equilibrium and uh, and for every such situation uh, that uh, resultant of n and f must pass through the point of intersection of the two other forces okay so that's the idea of a three force member now now depending on your the value of your p me p between p min and p max uh, the value of f will change and uh, the value of n will change okay uh, where the value of n will change yeah possibly the value of n will also change and uh, the line of action uh, of n might also shift okay line of action of n might also shift so <clears throat> so if i now consider the equilibrium of the system okay with respect to o okay uh so, so means that for equilibrium all the forces is acting must be collinear no the equilibrium doesn't demand that uh, all the forces be collinear okay all the forces need to be only concurrent you understand concurrent right they must intersect at a single point not only that of course you know the sum of all the forces b0 so when all the forces are concurrent uh, those forces are as good as acting on a particle then the only criteria that is required there is no moment criteria actually there is only uh, then the force criteria that sum of all the forces in x sum of all the forces in y and let's consider it 3d then some of all the forces in z should be zero that's the equilibrium condition okay so uh, if i if i now write the moment equation with respect to o this is what i'm about to get so uh, for for w okay so um, so if i consider uh this one um, this two as my axis x prime and y prime so for w i have this um, so b by 2 i prime plus h by 2 j prime cross w times um so w should be minus sin theta i prime plus cos theta oh sorry minus cos theta j prime right 
So all I'm doing is I'm taking lines parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. And this angle, of course, is theta. So you have minus sine theta i in the x, x prime coordinate and minus cos theta j prime in the prime coordinate system. So this is the moment due to uh, w. Then due to the normal force, the friction force doesn't produce any moment. Due to normal force, it's got to be, let's call this distance as d. So d times n, of course it is plus. And uh, then the mom clockwise moment due to p should be x times p. Okay, and that has to be zero. Okay, and uh, and then if you do summation of all the forces in y prime direction that would be n minus w cos theta i guess okay because i chose p to be parallel to the plane and that equals to zero so yes again we have the familiar situation where n is w cos theta so you can substitute that expression w cos theta and uh, can you get the expression for p in this case Sorry, I need you to get the expression for D, not P. In terms of P and X, okay, imagine X and P are known quantities. Can you get the expression for D? Now you have the third equation of equilibrium, which is a summation of forces in the x prime direction, and that involves the friction force. So, which is uh, p minus w sine theta. Okay, and it would depend uh, whether it is a plus or minus f. Okay, is equal to zero. Okay. And uh, let's say you are looking for P mean, that is when, you know, you are letting the Almira, you know, slide down the slope, okay, extremely slow, gradually, without acceleration. So in that case, the friction force would be acting uh, upwards along the slope. Okay. And if you're trying to pu push the, you know, block upwards, push the Almira upwards, then the friction force would be trying to act in the downward direction okay uh, so can you uh, from can you from uh, you know this analysis okay uh, determine the value of p so determine the p mean and p max actually so n is w cos theta and uh, p is your uh, W sine theta plus and minus F. So in either situation, when it is about to have a relative motion, either in the downward or the upward direction, you have uh, F equals mu s times n. Okay. And accordingly, the sign will also change whether it is moving upwards or downwards. So if you are trying to bring it downwards, then uh, this is plus. When, when you are trying to push it upwards, then it is minus. 
can you get the values of p min and p max Sir, the P max should be uh, W into sine theta plus mu cos theta, and P minimum should be W into sine theta minus mu cos theta. Okay. Okay. So now you know every other every quantity, right? The normal force, the friction force. Okay, and uh, and for both the situations. Okay. Now substitute. Let's say consider the case A. so you are trying to move upwards one second Okay, so, uh, so consider the case A where you are trying to push it upwards, and as you mentioned, this turns out to be P max turns out to be uh, W uh, times uh, sine theta plus mu. Sorry? The value of x is known, sir. Value of x is not known. Uh, the, I mean, uh, for, yeah, you can imagine value of x is known, so you are doing everything symbolically. Okay, so try to get the expression for d in terms of x. Okay, so you can write w to be uh, what sine uh, sine theta plus mu cos theta, so it can be written as. sin theta plus phi divided by cos phi where phi is the friction angle like phi equals tan inverse mu s so this is how it can be written it's theta plus sin theta plus phi divided by cos phi okay so uh, whatever exp expression suit you so maybe the first expression substitute that over there sir so from the first equation we should get another constant uh, of p max uh, because uh, d cannot be uh, greater than the width okay uh, let's not go there okay try to get the expression for d so imagine you have the value of p okay Let's substitute this p max over there, okay? And uh, that is the p max that is required for you to cause a slide in the upward direction. That means you need to slide the uh, Almira along the slope. Just to do that in the upward direction, you need you need that value of p, okay? That is the minimum value of p that you require, okay? So substitute that expression in this expression to get the uh, value of d. So what is the expression of D are you getting?
sir yes sir a pmg আর নরমাল রিঅ্যাকশনের যে পয়েন্ট নরমাল পিআরএমজি যে পয়েন্টে ইন ক্রস করছে ইন্টারসেক্ট করছে সেই পয়েন্ট দিয়ে নরমাল রিঅ্যাকশন তো পাস করতে পারবে না স্যার আবার শুনুন কথাটা নরমাল রিঅ্যাকশন नीड नॉट पास थ्रू द পয়েন্ট অফ ইন্টারসেকশন অফ পি এন্ড ডব্লিউ इट्स द রেজাল্ট্যান্ট অফ দ্য নরমাল ফোর্স এন্ড দ্য ফ্রিকশন ফোর্স ওকে সো দ্যাট ইজ দ্য থার্ড ফোর্স ইউ আর টকিং अबाउट द थ्री ফোর্স member right yes, so you yes. can say that the normal and the friction force are acting at the same point so basically you get the line of action of the normal force and wherever that intersects with the uh, with this face okay this uh, face lying with the slope okay so that point of intersection you can imagine the friction force is acting at that location so all you have to do is to get the resultant and that resultant that resultant must pass through that point of intersection Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. Okay. One that is the point number one, and point number two is that should only happen when the system is in equilibrium. The system could be doing a lot of things. It could be you know accelerating downwards, going moving upwards uh, in acceleration. If we are applying enormous force in the upward direction, or it could be this doing this third thing, which is tip over one of its vertices, and that is the con- uh, situation we are going to consider. so you might have got some expression some expression of d as a function of x okay so and uh, that is somewhat like if x increases d also increases sir in uh, problems like the uh, problems like fiction uh, do we have to draw two separate three body diagrams to show the different directions of friction different directions oh okay you are considering cases a and b yes uh, yes you should so did you get d as a function of x yes sir well, what is that so b by 2 minus h by 2 tan theta plus uh, Plus tan theta plus mu into x means x into tan theta plus mu. H by two tan theta plus uh, it within bracket tan theta plus mu into x. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, if x increases, okay. Uh, so. so does d and if you uh, look at it like this if x is h by 2 even when x is h by 2 there is you are applying the force exactly in the middle of this face okay this quantity uh, right here d is actually higher than b by 2 so it is b by 2 plus mu times x okay. and this is what is actually happening underneath uh, this block right here So imagine this block. I'm sh- only showing a portion of it. Okay, and uh, these are the set of so the normal force. Okay, which you see in every such situation for every every value of p and every height of p, the n is always w cos theta. Okay, as you can see, p has but practically no effect on the value of n. and the location of p of course has no effect on n so n is always w cos theta but that's just a net normal force the distribution of the normal force could be something else and uh, you know uh, the normal force could be distributed in a normal distribution or any other distribution okay so let's say this is a distribution okay and this distribution let's say uh this is of course a distributed force let's say this can be shown uh, to be equivalent to uh, so this is a distribution of the normal force so this can be shown to be equivalent to uh, the normal force you know uh, equivalent as in the equivalent force moment system the normal force acting at this distance d from the from the corner okay and uh, <clears throat> and uh, so what do we see here is uh, that the normal force need not be passing through the center 
And actually, if we apply this force at a height uh, higher than h by 2, OK, uh, al although I'm not quite sure that this is the correct expression. Um, so uh, at a height higher than uh, 10 theta, OK, yeah, pro possibly the correct, uh, uh, correct expression. Because you know, in my mind, I'm just considering the uh, horizontal surface. So that's why I don't have an expression of h by 2 in my mind. But yes, of course, uh, with a slope, possibly you have this h by 2, 10 theta. So, so the fact is that it is always, uh, you know, even if now if you impose this, that theta is less than phi, okay, so that it doesn't come down uh, on its own. So you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, this thing always going above um, your uh, b by two, okay. So. Uh, and so on. So, uh, so you can you can see that it can be it 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 not be passing through the middle. It can be anywhere. Okay. And as I increase x more and more, okay, uh, there is a possibility. There is a possibility that uh, that it is on the on this vertex right here. The normal force, the net resultant normal force is like this. So essentially, the distribution of the normal force becomes something like this okay it is mostly zero everywhere it's just that it is extremely high at this uh, other vertex okay essentially making up for w cos theta at a single location okay and there is no place for me to push normal force any further okay so if i consider theta less than phi less than the friction angle so x value less than h for even uh, x value less than h, okay, uh, uh, or for that matter, uh, I don't know. So we'll, we'll find some location, okay, uh, of x that can give me a situation where, uh, for a given x value, this normal force, in order to have an equilibrium, must go beyond uh, this distance b. So this d has to be, let's say, uh, greater than b, okay. D has to be actually less than equal B, but let's say to have equilibrium for that there, there exists certain value of X for which in order to have equilibrium, the D value must be greater than B. And because D value cannot be greater than B, uh, the system cannot be in equilibrium. The system cannot be in equilibrium uh, when the X value is such. The point here is which one of the equilibrium equation would fail. You see that these two have no effect on uh, with the dimensions. The only one that is affected by the dimensions is the moment equation. That means the uh, the equilibrium of rotation would be void then. Okay, and uh, since the entire normal force is acting over here, and you can also imagine the friction force is also acting over here. So of this entire flat surface that is acting as a support, there is only one vertex where the entire normal force and the friction force can be thought of acting. Which basically means of this entire flat surface that is supported by the, you know, the slope or the ground or whatever, this one vertex, okay, has two reaction forces that is preventing in preventing motion in two directions. But the entire remaining flat surface has no reaction force at all. Okay, so the situation, there is a limiting situation for that limiting x value, the normal force and friction force is acting over here. And when you have a support at a vertex, at a single point, there is only one normal, uh, uh, there, there are only two forces and no moment. Okay, what sort of support is that? Pin joint. It's a pin joint. So it becomes a pin joint and the system can now roll over if you, you know, increase the x higher because as you increase x higher there is additional moment in the clockwise direction so now the system would you know topple or you know uh, tip over this other vertex let's call it o prime now it would try to topple over the other ver vertex o prime so this is the classic uh, slip or tip problem okay and the typical question that would be asked to you you would be given this value of x Okay, and then you would be asking, you would be asked whether the system will uh, sleep first or tip first. That is, whether it would, uh, you know, start having relative motion first, or it would, uh, you know, uh, 
the you know the uh, whether whether this equation would be void first or this equation of equilibrium would be void first okay so that means uh, if the x value is given to you and we are doing this moment balance okay in order for this moment equation to be void p must go beyond certain value okay so we can calculate that p that is required to cause uh, an angular motion or the toppling effect of this almira over this vertex o prime okay and then i can check whether that p value that p value is sufficient to cause sliding okay or more than sufficient to cause sliding okay now if that p value is more than so called p max over here so in that case uh, the rotation doesn't happen if p value uh, turns out to be higher than uh, this sliding p value okay so whichever p value is smaller that is that equilibrium equation would be void and that is the motion that is going to happen okay so so this is uh, you know this is the example of classic slip or tip problems okay uh, so you can uh, you can throw in certain values for example uh, w equal let's say um, how much Let's say um, 180 pound, okay, and uh, coefficient of friction. Let's say 0.3, and uh, let's say the B value is about um, two feet, and uh, the H value is about six feet. by the way some of you are confused this one is feet and this one is inch okay so 2 feet and 6 feet these are the dimensions and let's say x value is given to be uh, so you are applying this at a height of 4 feet okay so if all of these are given to you question is are you able to you know successfully able to slide this along the surface or it simply starts toppling okay so uh, the other question that can be asked is uh, what should be the maximum value of x in order to have in order to have uh, sliding and not the toppling effect okay so if let's say this 4 ft height gives you a solution that uh, before having the sliding the system would uh, you know void the moment equilibrium uh, moment balance okay and basically the system would uh, topple about o prime okay before having the sliding and uh, then the question is uh, what is the maximum value of x okay uh, the, where you can apply the force without having the toppling effect okay to have the sliding now can you try to answer that question can you check what is the what is the value uh, of uh, p are you getting so you can imagine one of the cases you can imagine either the sliding is happening and then calculate the p max and then plug that in in the moment equation and check whether it is uh, so you you can actually uh, work in both ways you can calculate the moment required sorry the p value required to uh, you know uh for uh, uh, given x sorry uh, where am i wrong oh, okay 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 so what you can do is uh, okay so you can get let's say the um, p required the value of p required to cause sliding plug that uh, for a given x plug that in uh, into the moment equation and get the value of d and if d turns out to be higher than b okay then uh, then before having sliding it will topple okay and if d is less than b then it is okay okay so the next thing that you can do is you can go for the maximum uh, so i am asking about the maximum so second part of the question is what is the maximum value of x how do you answer that so for that you take d to be b okay and uh, 
and uh, for the same force that is required for sliding plug that over here okay and calculate the x value okay so you are considering a situation where it is on the verge of having a sliding also it is on the verge of ha having a toppling effect both simultaneously that's what gives you the maximum value of x where you can apply the uh, apply the force okay so can you solve this problem Sir, what is the value of theta or it is uh, horizontal? Uh, okay, so theta you can take it to me. So mu s I have given to me 0 0.3, right? 0 0.3. So three. Theta take it to be fifteen degree. How much is tan theta if I take theta equal fifteen degree? Sir, uh, zero point two six eight. Okay. So you can right away substitute it over here. So if uh, if the x value is given to you, you can find out the d. Okay, so you all you already did that, right? So if you have give, been given x value, you can find out d, and if that d turns out to be higher than p, then uh, it is. It would be toppling first, and uh, before having, before having the sliding. And uh, in the second case, you can consider d to be b by uh, b. So if you consider d equals b, then you get certain expression for x. And that value of x uh, is the maximum height at which you can apply the force without having, uh, you know, uh, tipping before slipping. So if you take x equal four feet, okay, I just want to make one correction. Take b to be three feet, okay. So that is more reasonable value. So if you take b to be three feet. What value of uh, 
D are you getting? What is the value of D are you getting if you take x equal 4 feet? Sir, 0 0.937. It cannot be 0 0.937. Okay. So B by 2 itself is 1.5 feet, right? Okay, why did I put? It will be four inch, it is four feet. So 1.5 feet is B by two. Then H by two times tan theta. Uh, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. I did one mistake. Sir, uh, you have changed the value of x from 4 feet to 3 feet. No, I have changed the value of b from, b from 2 feet to 3 feet. x oh. still is 4 feet. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, it is coming at 2.96. 2.96. Okay. So that is well within uh, four, uh, uh, well within three feet, right? So actually very close to three feet. So if you, you know, go a little farther than this, uh, then probably it will topple. Okay. So I need you to uh, calculate the value of x if D where B, that is at the uh, the reaction forces are acting at O prime. Then what would be the value of X? Sir, then the value is coming uh, 4.056. 4.056. 4.056. So, which basically means uh, 4 feet is kind of the limit at which uh, you can apply um, the, you know, uh, the force that is parallel to the plane to lift the lift the mirror. Okay. For the given uh, slope and the given uh, coefficient of friction and all. 
So that is the limiting value. Okay. Okay. So uh, you see this problem also uh, is very similar to what we just did. So I'm talking about this problem right here. So the problem statement here is. So, <clears throat> so the coefficient of friction has been given. Okay, now uh, you can take any value of m, and this works. Let's say m is uh, let's say 100 kg. T you can take it to be as uh, let's say. Um, 500 mm or something okay and uh, and the question the coefficient of friction is given to be 0 0.5 the question is uh, whether this object will slip or tip first okay so with the chosen direction of application of this force p okay uh, will this object you know start uh, start sliding first or it will start, you know, toppling over C. Okay, so it is always the furthest corner. Okay, which can be the pivot point. Okay, so uh, I guess you know because you already considered that, uh, um, you know, uh, slant surface. I think the flat surface problem is much simpler. Only thing is, in this case, uh, n is not w cos theta. As you can see, p has a component uh, in the direction perpendicular to the plane on which the object is, you know, currently present. So, so that is uh, let that be an assignment. Okay. So uh, try to solve that on your own, and uh, because we did a very similar uh, problem, so we would skip this one. You can take a screenshot of the problem. And uh, I hope you understand the problem statement. Uh, the question is whether uh, it is going to tip or slip. So let me determine that. Sir, can you zoom it, please, a bit? Yeah. Is this okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, will it sleep first? That is the question. Whether will it, will it sleep or... No, sir, I'm, sir, I'm no I don't have to answer. I don't have to answer. I never carry an answer with myself. Okay, sir. I mean, for some problems, I do recall the answers, but... Okay, so we can do it. Uh, I mean, you can do it on your own. Um, Okay, so we can focus on the next set of problems. So you can imagine this has these are uh, like some uniform cylinders. 
which basically means uh, each of them are identical to every mm -hmm. other and uh, you know the mass is well distributed passing through the cent you know, geometric center and so on so the question is uh, what should be the uh, minimum value of mu is in order for you to have equilibrium of the system so imagine you are stacking cylinder after cylinders so what should be the minimum coefficient of friction okay so for that you need to know uh, how the forces should be acting i mean so let's start with the top cylinder Sir, for all surfaces, frictional coefficient, coefficient is same. Yes. So between the cylinders and between the cylinder and the ground, it's the same. So there is weight. Okay. And uh, if this is the center, and this, okay. So, so contacting region would be. 180 degrees apart right are they going to be 180 degrees apart like this to this no they would, they would be 60 degrees apart so this is the vertical line and this angle is 30 degree and this angle oh it looks much more than 30 degree So this much angle is 30 degree and uh, this much angle is another 30 degree. So can you repeat the question once I lost yes. my connection? So uh, basically what is the minimum coefficient of friction that you require in order to have equilibrium? Okay, if the coefficient of friction is uh, same on each surface. So to identical set of normal forces in and in are acting over here and because the frictional forces should be such that the moments must cancel each other so they are also acting like this okay and if you take the resultant of these two friction forces their resultant also is uh, you know vertically downward And then you can go for one of the bottom cylinders. Okay, so on that one. again at an angle of 30 degree you have uh, the normal force in and uh, sir shouldn't the direction of friction be opposite shouldn't the direction of friction be opposite as in this and this yes sir no, I mean, friction is tangential. The, so you'll have to draw the tangents at these two locations. And uh, does it look like these two tangents are, you know, they, they are not, this, that is, they are not the same straight line. So there is no question of opposite friction. Okay. Now, you can imagine it is possible to have some normal force into coming from the let's say this is cylinder number one this is two and this is three so maybe from cylinder number two you are getting in two okay but it's not a possibility that you get a friction force why is that because of the shear 
symmetry of the problem if it is uh, you know very uniform very symmetric okay then uh, the friction force from 2 to 3 and 3 to 2 must also act in the same direction but they being action and reaction it cannot be the same that means the friction force from between 2 and 3 must be zero so again this is passing through the center and uh, then there is the weight there is a weight w the normal force in 3 from the ground and uh, the corresponding f3 preventing the sliding okay so i could actually sir yes so basically 2 and 3 are just in contact so should there be any into uh what are limiting condition over i guess okay no that that's actually uh, i'm not sure whether that is the limiting condition uh and yes you are correct that uh, that into possibly is zero okay it is safe to assume that into is possible is zero you see uh, there is uh, no one is trying to put put them together okay and uh, if you put another cylinder on top of them okay they are maybe they are in contact but the tendency is they separate out from one another okay maybe they are in contact but they have a tendency of going away from one another okay so so basically the situation is that uh, that into would be zero okay so yes for you can you can also take it to be zero so now you would be dealing with four set of unknowns and um, and for this one we have already used uh, two equations of equilibrium that is sigma fx equals 0 we have deliberately made that and uh, sigma mz about any point let's say the center c1 we have deliberately made it zero okay so we only have a sigma fy equals 0 only one equation of equilibrium and for this one mm, we have all the equations of equilibrium yeah we do have all the equations of equilibrium okay so we we have three equations of equilibrium so together we will be having four equations of equilibrium okay and once we solve it okay and uh, you know uh, i was a little skeptical about uh, drawing free body diagrams because i'm i'm little confused with uh, what sort of relative motion can happen between between let's say two cylinders okay and what should be the relation of the friction force but right at this point you should not be bothered about this okay you see when we have when we have solved uh, this problem entirely okay you see there are the if n pairs there are two of them there is if n pair over here which is also the same over here and same over here and then there is if 3 and 3 pair over here so for whichever pair i have the highest if by n ratio that should be actually uh, my minimum coefficient of friction why so because uh, at if at one interface okay uh it can be uh, it it is equal to mu s 
and for then for other uh, you know other interfaces it should be less than or equal to mu s okay so whichever f by n has the highest value whether this one or this one that should be minimum value of mu s okay because friction force could be anything and in any direction that is tangentially in any direction left or right upwards or downwards okay but the absolute value is less than mu s times m so at this point you shouldn't even bother about the direction of the friction force as well okay you just know that everything has to be in equilibrium and for that whether if uh, if foot should uh, over here from should go from right to left or left to right that can be seen later okay so let that if value come negative okay if it goes from left to right let that if value come negative okay uh, and if this f3 value uh, comes negative then we would assume that uh, uh, with the ground the cylinder has a tendency of uh, rotating in the uh clockwise direction so all of those can be assumed so uh, so the thing is uh, there are two interfaces and uh, you know basically four unknowns n3 nf n3 f3 will you know determine all of those in terms of w and once we do so for whatever uh, you know uh, location we have the maximum f by n value or whatever f by n value is maximum that actually the minimum value for mu is to have a possible configuration like this okay so uh, do you get uh, the the expression for uh, i mean the, could you write all the equations of equilibrium or could you solve f and n in terms of w এই প্রবলেমটা কি করা যাবে মনে হচ্ছে তাহলে ছেড়ে দেবো
sir weight ko to dewa ache uh, you don't need that value right everything would come in terms of w so you can take the uh, ratio actually anyways let's keep this problem i think it is uh, yes sir equating the uh, moment of the uh, system of the uh, second free body diagram mm -hmm. uh, we can assure that the direction of the f should be reversed because it is coming some uh, r into f plus f3 is equal okay, to okay, okay okay but i am not sure which one would be reversed either a for f3 i don't know that okay. so Correct. let that be uh, you know uh, once you solve all the four equations you will have the answer okay so the idea is get the uh, you know uh, if uh, if the f by n ratio changes from one location to other okay uh, then whichever has the highest value is uh, supposed to be the minimum coefficient of friction okay so uh, because we are running out of time let's address a uh, few more problems two more problems so just you know leave it there okay so actually i am i was getting root 3 by 7 i was like but i'm not sure about that okay uh, you can you can recheck it just check at uh, that is that is a maximum value that you are getting or are you getting same at both locations the one minute the one minute sir yeah actually you got supposed sir, to get uh, sir without uh, the w given will it be in the form of w see if and n these values are proportional to w obviously you see all the equations are homogeneous right once you put uh, all a n and w the right hand sides are all zero so uh, you know each a and n would come in terms of w okay so in the end all you were supposed to do is to uh, get the ratio of f by n at the two interfaces okay and whichever has the highest value you should you know take that as the minimum coefficient of friction Okay, so let's now look at this problem right here. Okay, so this is again a uniform rod. Okay, so that means you know where the weight is acting. Okay, and again everything comes in terms of weight, and uh, the thing is, uh, you see the question is if I give you a coefficient of friction at a equals 0.8 because at b it is obviously a roller support so no coefficient of friction okay uh, so if uh, at a the coefficient of friction is 0.8 okay so what is the maximum theta that you can have without you know uh, without so is it the maximum value or the minimum value yeah i guess the maximum value of theta that you can have without having without having the mm, i mean within the domains of equilibrium okay so you can have the system in equilibrium so so the situation is this so at b you are receiving a force normal to the ground okay so let's call it by of course and this angle is theta okay this length is 2r but you can divide that into r and r and that's where the weight is acting okay and at a you can you would receive a normal force and a uh, and a tangential force now which direction is a normal direction normal to what so it is actually normal to it is supposed to be the common normal and uh, because the center of that circle 
yes center of that circular arc so the point is uh, when we are talking about a normal direction in a contact in a frictional surface so it is always a common normal and you see um, it might be a little confusing how is that normal to the rod okay you see the edge of the rod is very sharp is it it is either pointy or rounded in any case it can accommodate different normals okay and whenever it is in contact it does so it does so by getting a common tangent and a common normal okay so it, we are talking about the common tangential direction and the common normal direction okay so this is the direction of the normal force in and uh, because it can slide down you know downwards so i can imagine a, fric a frictional force acting in the upward direction the angle of course is 90 degrees now uh, if uh, you know since we are considering the maximum theta value or something so f is obviously the limiting one that is it is about to have the sliding okay but it still is not so what is the next thing to find out the direction of the normal force and the friction force to do that i can give you some hint and this problem is again an assignment you see this height is twice r sin theta and let's say on the center of this arc the angle is phi okay therefore cos phi must be cos phi must be r minus twice r sin theta divided by r which is 1 minus twice sin theta okay because you see this much divided by r is your cos phi okay so this phi is the would give you the direction of the normal force okay and uh, then similarly you can have the direction of the friction force and those are those you need uh, to get to get <clears throat> what first of all you can so for this configuration i said one thing please note i have drawn the path on which the you know the rod is resting but i have not drawn the roller i have not drawn the ground also this path is only represented through broken lines as if i am only showing the you know the surface okay okay i am not physically showing showing the surface i am only showing the outline of the surface okay. only for representation okay and that's what is a free body diagram please note these things while you draw free body diagrams okay so i believe from this you can proceed to the answer the steps i would suggest that uh, you can you know start with uh, moment about a so that you have the value of by and then you can figure out how much should be the value of a and f to have the equilibrium and uh, and once you have that a and f okay uh the mm, then you can substitute a equals mu s times n and actually you would get n and f in terms of theta right um because the relation between w and by is by is w by 2 i mean you know by just by looking at it one can figure that out so once you do all of that you will have the expression for n and f and uh, as you can see f is uh, mu s times n and so on so uh, uh so with that you know then you can calculate 
calculate what is the value of theta. Once you use this equation, you have the value of theta. Okay, so I'm just leaving it as an assignment. Let's now address the final problem of the day, or also from this chapter. Uh, Okay, so I guess you'd be able to solve this problem. Sir, the next day call is available. Actually, why not? Because what is it? Because I am going to start today. Today, we will start properties of service. Okay, so. So I don't think we have that much time. So yeah, I hope you can see this image right here. <clears throat> okay. So the question is in this one. Determine the value of P to cause sliding. And there are three blocks involved, and basically three interfaces one with the ground. The other with uh, the orange and the blue block, and then the orange with the top blue block. Now, one thing for sure that uh, the top blue block is not going anywhere because it is attached to this cable, and the cable can support tensile load, and it is always going to be in tension because you are pulling the middle block towards, uh, you know, towards below. So there are two ways: the equilibrium. Or the sliding can happen, or the equilibrium could be void. One is both of these blocks, 50 and 40 kg. I mean, this sounds crazy, but this is quite the possibility. May not be the final answer, but this is quite the possibility that this 50 kg block and the 40 kg block simultaneously slide slide down downwards. That means uh, with the applied P, you lose uh, you lose contact with the ground. You lose contact with the 30 kg block, but the 15 40 kg block are still in contact. Okay, that is one possibility. The other possibility is both 30 and 40 kg blocks remain stationary. Okay, and the 50 kg block slides down. Okay, that's how it can initiate. Now after initiation, lot of things can happen. Maybe the 50 and 40 kg block both are sliding down. Okay, and then between 50 and 40 kg block, there is also some gravity motion. Lot of things can happen. But uh, when we are talking about initiation of sliding, then at least uh, then uh, we are talking about the minimum value of p, okay? which means the value of p required just to create uh, the initiation of sliding. Okay, and in that situation, one of the two things can happen. Okay, if both of them are having uh, happening, that is, both 50 and 40 kg blocks are sliding down. And 50 and 40 kg blocks are having gliti motion. Uh, that is only happening after both the blocks started sliding down. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, uh, so uh, the only two cases that we should consider. So, case A. Okay. Uh, only 50 kg block. Slides down. Okay. So, so in this case, the situation should be that uh, there is ready motion between 30 and 50 kg block. There is ready motion between 50 and 40 kg block. Okay, and they are at their respective, uh, you know. So, if I draw this uh, 50 kg, so 
let's say about 500 newton okay and it is being pulled by this force p over here and uh, it is receiving some normal force let's say in one from here and in two from here and uh, also receiving friction forces if two and uh, in uh, if one and uh, both if one uh, is uh, uh, and if two are their limiting values okay because only when both the situation uh, you know uh, both the surfaces have you know limiting friction is that you are sliding down okay so in this case uh, mm, uh, you also need the the free body diagram of the first block so there is this tension t over here there is this uh, mm, normal force in one there is the weight uh, of 300 kg okay and uh, of course the bottom uh, the orange block is pulling it downwards by uh, if one okay so so you will have a set of equations from these two and uh, then you will have another set of equation for the 40 kg block so there is a 400 newton force over here uh, acting downwards there is the normal force uh, in three from the ground in two from the middle block uh, if two because the middle block is pulling it uh, downwards but uh, the ground is trying to keep it stationary so if three is you know upwards and uh, what else should be there uh, this if three should be uh, 0 0.45 in three okay so so we are starting with this assumption that the uh, that the you know the middle block is sliding down okay so if we uh, consider this case so both of these are limiting friction sorry so this third one is not the limiting friction because uh, if three then must be less than equals mu s times n3 okay so we'll start with this assumption that these two are limiting frictions and uh, we'll eventually calculate all the forces or the ones that is required and then check uh, the relation between f3 and n3 and the ratio if the ratio of the three uh, two is uh, less than the static friction that is uh, 0 0.45 over here and then we would consider that our assumption that our assumption that only the 50 kg block slides down is correct and we will go with that assumption or we can you know consider case b where uh, 50 plus 40 kg block are sliding down okay so this is the free body diagram then okay so there is p now uh, for the free body diagram of the first body remains same and this is uh, you know your 900 newton downwards then this is a uh, f3 and n3 right here <clears throat> okay and then you can you know uh, use this relation f3 equals uh, 0 0.45 n3 because you are considering the case where both the blocks are sliding down okay and from that you can get the value of p okay and uh, whatever other force that you achha, by the way you need uh, in one that is acting over here and uh, if one and if one is also your limiting friction which is 0 0.3 in one so the unknowns are um, or what are the unknowns See, n3 is a is an unknown n1 achha, no n1 n3 both are not uh, unknown uh, actually you would be uh, yeah you would be knowing the values of n1 and n3 uh, by solving the equations of equilibrium let's say from the first free body diagram you will know the value of n1 from this this free body diagram you will know the value of n3 and by the time you know n1 and n3 you can you would also know f1 and f3 and from that you can get p and once you have p then you consider the second uh, the third free body diagram where there is f1 over here f2 over here and this one is 500 newton and there is n2 and there is n1 
okay now you know n1 and n3 and f3 and f1 and p okay so these are the known quantities the ones marked with star n2 and f2 are not known quantities so you know again this is a particle because we are not considering dimensions so you can use those uh, two equations of equilibrium to calculate n2 and f2 okay and once you have the values of n2 and f2 then you need to check that uh, whether f2 is less than equals 0.4 into because 0.4 is the coefficient of friction so you can consider either of the cases okay and uh, let's say you considered uh, the second case first and uh, once you check this final expression it turned out to be false let's say so then you'll have to say that the case b is wrong uh, we need to consider the case a and then by considering case a you will get the value of p and that would be the correct p okay so do you think you can solve this problem like that yes sir okay so yeah so you are also not solving this one in the class so consider this one as also uh, as a as an assignment but if you are you know uh, having problem solving this one we can definitely discuss in the next class okay so